Hello everyone, today I am reviewing and demoing these two items. So we've got the Flawless Match Natural Finish Foundation and the Flawless Match Concealer. So if you're new here, my name is Irina and one of the things that I do on my channel is reviewing Avon makeup and Avon products. Um, I do Avon hauls and then um, you can see on my channel I have reviewed quite a bit of Avon makeup. Um, I had the channel for about two years, so throughout the two years I have reviewed quite a bit. Um, and I do best and worst of Avon uh, and also best and worst of or wins and fails of my Avon hauls. You will also see other brands because I do like makeup in general um, and uh, there are so many products out there. But today's video is on Avon makeup. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my voice on today's video. Um, I have been a little bit unwell for the past two weeks, but I'm starting to get better. Um, I still have this like croaky voice. Ooh, I'm also going to show you another product uh, that's been quite hyped by Avon, which is the Renewal Power Eye Cream. I want to talk a little bit about this because I was very intrigued myself. Um, and I only have my cream with SPF on. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on. It's got a bit there. Um, just put it under this eye. I have been using it for about a week now um, and it feels very plumping, very hydrating. Um, a week is not enough to see like uh, dramatic results or anything. Um, and to be completely fair, this week uh, has been the week I've worked uh, my morning shift um, and with being unwell, I haven't slept that well, so my eyes haven't been that, like my under eyes have been, like you could tell I didn't sleep that well. Uh, so I couldn't tell you much of what this has done um, in terms of, you know, uh, brightening the under eye area and things. Um, but when I put it on, it just feels like, um, it just makes me feel awake straight away. You could kind of like feel the hydration sinking in, which is really nice. It's a really nice feeling when you've had a bad night's sleep and you just need to wake up quickly. <laughs> just to give you a little comparison of the, this is the eye that I haven't put anything on and this is where I put something on. Um, I think it kind of like looks slightly more hydrated and you can definitely see it's got like a little bit of a more of a glow. I'm gonna put it on here now. So these are just the thoughts on the cream so far. Um, yeah, I do quite enjoy it and I enjoy using it. Um, so yeah. So just a few things about this foundation. So this is the reformulated and repackaged version of the old Flawless Foundation, which is this one here. So the main difference between them is obviously the packaging. Uh, this one came in a glass bottle with a pump, uh, while this one is a plastic tube and just a regular squeezy um, type of situation here. <laughs> this old one was 30 mil and it costs 10 pounds. This new one is 30 mil and also costs 10 pounds. This one used to come in 18 shades. This one now comes in 35 shades. Um, so I'll put the shades on the screen so you can see just how many shades there are on this one. And I really, really like how many there are in at the ends of the spectrum, the very dark shades and the very light shades. They both have SPF in. Uh, this one had SPF 15, this one has SPF 20. And what this one has more than what this one used to have, they, it's also infused with hyaluronic acid. So let's just see what they say about this foundation. It's your time to get matched. Our color experts work with people of all skin tones using a unique combination of pigments to skillfully match each shade for a flawless match finish. They said that it's got a smart match technology, 3D pigments combined to precisely match your unique skin tone from for natural skin feel and buildable medium to full coverage. I do not know what 3D pigment is. I cannot even imagine in my head what a 3D pigment is. But you would think from that description that uh, you could match more than one shade. More on that a little bit later on. Um, this has a skin loving formula with hyaluronic acid for a hydrating yet weightless natural skin look and feel. So because they've introduced extra shades in this foundation, I thought I would try 
some shades that I don't normally try. This one I used in light nude and I got this one in light nude and two other shades. So what I've done is I got samples um, just to see which one matches me the best. So I've got one in 130N which is, by the way they come with numbers now and name shades but on the actual um, bottle uh, it's only the numbers so you gotta um, remember what you ordered I think you just just go by the numbers I think that will probably be easier so uh, I said I got in 130N which is alabaster and that's supposed to have a neutral undertone uh, I got one in 220G which is the light nude and that's supposed to have a golden undertone and one in 210N and this is light beige and it's supposed to have a neutral undertone except for the light nude um, the other two are new shades so let's swatch the lightest one the alabaster one 130n i just dug my finger in there which is why my finger is so so dirty then the next one is 210n which is light beige And 220G, which is light nude. Right, so Alabaster 130N, 210N light beige, 220G light nude. Okay, see this one's oxidized already. And I think this one's got a warm undertone now. Um to be completely honest, I do not know what my undertone is. Uh, I am a little bit confused when I go through the questions about what your undertone is because when I look at my veins, they do look green, but I, I burn quickly in the sun. So I'm a little bit confused as to my undertone is, but I was kind of hoping that I would have one in the fair to light spectrum that is actually neutral toned. But this one, that's supposed to be neutral toned, I don't think that's neutral, neutral undertone. So this one, um, which is the light nude, which was my previous shade, um, I think, well, I know now that it actually matches me better. So it's just gonna blend a little bit. So we can definitely see this one's too light. And I knew it would be light, but I just wanted something to compare to. This one. You can see it's just a little bit too warm. Um, I do have pictures wearing this one all over my face, uh, which I will put on here. It's just kind of like makes me look a little bit green I think you can tell me in the comments if you agree or disagree like I said I am so confused about what my undertone is uh, but this one doesn't seem it it works but it doesn't match me perfectly and then this one we can see this one blends in so much better and I would say even before with the previous one I thought this one had more neutral undertones than, than warm ones let's do a little comparison between the previous light nude and the new one so the first thing we can notice is that the new one which is here is a lot more liquidy like while this one is a lot more moussey so that's the old one that's the new one although I do have more of that one on there just to keep in mind but yeah it seems like the shades are pretty much the same as the previous ones the ones that they kept out well not the ones they kept because they kept all 18 shades plus they've added more so before I start applying the foundation to, on my face today I will insert um, some b-rolls from previous days when I've used the foundation in different ways with different primers and things like that just to see what it looks like and just for your information my skin type is combination I have oily t-zone and uh, normal skin otherwise um, I'm also 41 years years old um, so I do have wrinkles and other signs of aging and things like that starting with day one no primer and applying the foundation with my fingers
this is with all the makeup done. Day two, I'm going to use a smoothing primer and I'm going to apply with a brush. The brush I'm using is Real Techniques 200. and I still have quite a bit left now I'm just uh, going over with a beauty blender just to um, smooth everything and applying a little bit more on my uh, on the center of my face and I'm also going to use uh, the concealer And then day three, I'm applying a glowing primer with a beauty blender. And I'm just showing you that you can see the glowy primer coming through. I've only set my T-zone this time. So today how I'm going to apply it is uh, just straight on my face without primer and with a foundation brush. I'm actually going to apply it to my face like that and then go in with the brush. I'm putting too much. I don't know. Well, we'll add some more if I need to. Just let me zoom you in a little bit though. So I'm going to use the foundation brush that I normally use when I do my makeup, which is the Real Techniques 200. Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit more on this uh, areas. Yeah, I think that covered quite well that redness. So I would say that the claim that is medium to full coverage is quite true. One thing I noticed though, Although this does seem like it's got a little bit of a glow. Uh, this one seems to be more mattifying, like more of a matte finish than this one, which had more of a satin finish. It's not a big deal. As you have seen, if you add a glowy primer, it definitely comes through and it looks really, really pretty. Um, right, so let's go into the concealers. So I bought two shades of the concealer and I have decided to keep both. Uh, one is in 21N which is neutral light and then the other one is in um, 12 and which is neutral fair neutral fair this is the lightest lightest shade and neutral light is kind of like a fourth down 
uh, this concealer has launched with 18 shades which is way 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 better than how many shades I used to have in the past. I do have a best and worst of Avon concealers and my biggest criticisms for that concealer uh, for their concealers was not enough shades. <laughs> um, so some concealers were either way too light for me or way too um, dark for me. But when there are 18 shades available, it's a lot easier to find one that would match you. Um, right, so about these concealers, they are eight pounds. Um, what's the, the three mil, which is oh, not great, but you know. Um, and it says that it's got a hydrating formula that matches your skin tone perfectly medium to full naturally radiant coverage controls shine conceals imperfection including dark circles blemishes and redness it's allergy and dermatologist tested um right so uh let's swatch these so we can obviously see this is neutral fat and this is neutral light the combination between these two is perfect for me um although if i do want uh, a more natural look i would go for that one if i want like a more awake look i would go for that one what i'm thinking of doing uh because i have been using these a little bit and i know uh, they look really nice it blends really nice what i'm thinking of doing is put a little bit more on this side than I normally do and then put as much as I would normally do on this side. Uh, let's start with the lightest shade. So normally I would only put one dot but let's do a little bit more. And then on this side just do a dot. That's all I would do. A bit there as well. So I'm gonna get a sponge I think, to blend it with. So we can see how brightening this one is. I am to use this one on its own. I'm definitely just going to use one little dot, but I want to show you how it blends. Depending on what your preference is, is using a little bit or using a lot. So to me, this looks just like skin. Even on this side where I've applied a lot more. Obviously the shade is a lot more pronounced on this side. Um, and I think I got a little bit more coverage on this side because I've applied more. Uh, but honestly, it just looks exactly like skin. Now I'm gonna go with yeah, this other shade, which is 21N. and hopefully get the same amount of coverage on both sides so you can see how much of a better match combining the two is for me there's the skin close up I mean I really like the finish of the foundation it looks just like skin and it just feels so lightweight it does sink in into here just a tiny bit but i haven't powdered yet this is one foundation that needs powdered but look at my pores just how beautiful that looks and then here where i've got all my fine lines and everything that just it doesn't look like the foundation settles in them or anything it just looks like my skin but more perfected so what i want to do today and finish the video tomorrow is leave one side of my under eye without powdering and then powder the other side just so I can see how quickly the concealer creases. Concealers, they crease on me very quickly um, because you can see I've got lines. Um, so because of the nature of my under eyes, it doesn't matter what the concealer claims, it will crease on me. Um, <clears throat> So, but I want to see how quickly it would crease. So, um, what I'm going to do is do the rest of my face, powder, uh, and just make sure I remember to leave one on the right without any sort of powder, and then we'll see how things look. Okay, I'm back. Uh, right, so I haven't powdered this area, so you can kind of see 
the concealer kind of settling in there a little bit although uh, if my face is normal I can't really see it which is really good so that's the other side just to give you a little comparison so far it's very minimal creasing I mean it's only been 15 minutes <laughs> um, but I'm very curious to see how it's like by the time I take my makeup off uh, zoom me out a little bit so we can have a look at the foundation there we are by the way I have used this brush which is the new 103 brush which they say it's a uh, full coverage foundation brush uh, then I realized oh that, that was a missed opportunity um, but to me it is very soft so I've used this brush actually for uh, my powder today um, and it works really well for powder I've also once I finished with the powder I've used it for my bronzer also works really well for bronzer so I don't know if I'm gonna use this one for foundation um, I'll have a think about that um, and I've used this side of this brush which is a 203 or 203 uh, which is a dual ended brush I haven't used this yet but I've used this side uh, just for my shimmer and it seemed to have applied it really well and uh, with quite a bit of intensity also this brush so far is promising um, and yeah that's it um, I also have this new spoolie brush oops which I haven't used yet actually um, but I will so I might you might see these brushes in another video because um, I do have some ideas kind of like new techniques and stuff like that I might use those brushes there but anyway that's my makeup done um, I will see how it wears at the end of the day I'm expecting my foundation to wear off from this area and maybe a little bit this area um, depending on if I touch my chin or not, but definitely this area, that's where my foundation usually wears off from, uh, but I'm very curious to see what this will look like at the end of the day, and I will come back tomorrow and give you my full thoughts. So, it's the next day, I've dyed my hair, <laughs> finally. Um, anyway, today I have actually applied the foundation with this brush, and uh, yeah, it works <laughs> it definitely works for applying the foundation um, whether I'm going to reach for this kind of brush to apply my foundation I'm not entirely sure I kind of I'm kind of a creature of habit when I find that something works really well for me I don't tend to uh, stray and I do find this brush really really good for powder uh, but if you do want to use it for foundation uh, it's actually not that bad. It doesn't seem to catch uh, to absorb too much of the foundation, which is good um, And it does require a little bit more blending than usual But you do get the kind of like a nice flawless finish if you insist So that's on the brush now how the foundation has worn yesterday um, So like I said, I normally expect it to be worn off from here I'm wearing it today and it is actually worn off from my nose and that's because Usually I need to blow my nose for some reason or another But yesterday I haven't done that much uh, I mostly been in the house and just doing things around the house and I didn't need to blow my nose so I, it's, none of it was wiped from around my nose um, it looked really nice still in this area around um, like my pores um, um, it's obviously not the first wear test I've been doing or the first time I've been wearing it so I know it can last really well um, if you set it I set mine with powder I don't tend to reach for setting sprays uh, but so I just set mine with powder if you don't set the foundation then um, you will obviously not get as good of a wear time out of it. Now for the concealers, um, I have to say I am very impressed. So there's a picture of me with the side where I haven't set the concealer. There, there was creasing right in this corner there um, and the creases that I would normally get because of my lines, you could only see them when I looked up. Uh, again, like I said, I haven't done much yesterday. So normal, days i would expect a little bit more creasing but um i had concealers that creased so badly within a couple of hours and that's without doing much yet that one creasing that little 
that that's that's amazing to me <laughs> and I don't say that lightly uh, one of the reasons I started this channel and I started doing A1 reviews is because that's all the reviews I was seeing how everything is amazing without a lot of explanations and I wanted to give reviews to people where you know that if I praise a product I really mean it um, and yeah I'm really really impressed with these concealers uh, I really like the formula so um, I would definitely recommend these but my criticism for the concealers is the size of them you only get three mil of product in here which is not a lot i think the power stay concealers are the same so there is that cost factor because cost per mil of product will be a little bit high uh, so that's kind of like your financial decision to make um, in the context of my collection because i do have a lot of makeup that doesn't bother me but if you have a little bit less as the only concealer you're using, you gotta take into consideration that you will be needing to replace it a lot more often than other concealers. So I would say maybe it's a good idea to uh, get it when it's on offer. And also the shade range is so much better than uh, anything Avon has had in the past. There's still room for improvement, but still so, so much better. The foundation another positive review really like how it wears it's just how natural it looks on the skin um so lightweight even if you when you build it up it just feels like you you're not wearing anything i do think the finish of this one is a little bit more matte compared to the finish of the previous one which is a little bit more satin um but depending on what you got underneath you can still get a glow if you want to have a glow it's kind of it seems to be quite customizable um and I would say it would suit most skin types, if not all skin types. I do have one criticism for this foundation and that is the packaging. It feels a lot cheaper than the previous one. Um, and also, if I don't clean this after every use, that's how it's like. I didn't clean it after last use, just so you can see how it gets. So you have to clean it after every single use so it doesn't get so mucky. <laughs> But I am guessing that that was uh, a decision that I had to make. It was probably between cheapening the packaging or raising the price of the foundation. And when I'm thinking of all the other shades they've introduced, uh, that doesn't seem like such a bad trade. So that's my opinion on the products. But if you also own them, um, let me know in the comments what you think of them. It will help other people. Um, see more opinions and also if you t tell us your skin type that would be quite uh, good to know so i hope this was useful for you if it was i would really appreciate a thumbs up on this video um if you're not subscribed yet i would love it if you would subscribe uh thank you very much if you are subscribed and thank you for watching all the way to the end and i'll see you in my next one bye